You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Hey everybody, welcome to TV Guidance Counselor. I am Ken Reed, as always, your TV Guidance Counselor, here each and every week to talk about classic television with a guest using back issues of TV Guide Magazine from my personal collection as the gateway into our collective viewing choices. And we are still in lockdown. It is pandemic 2020. And it's uh, pretty horrible. There's a lot of people who have passed away here in the United States. We are still, it's gotten worse again. And, uh, I mean, you know all that. You don't, you don't come for me, to me for news. You know, that's what I'm saying to you. Um, but I have an excellent guest this week. It's another international guest. So, uh, one good thing that's come out of this is that it is forced me to get a decent setup for doing remote episodes to the point where I don't even think you'd know we weren't in the same room if I didn't tell you just now. So if you wanted to play a joke on somebody and, uh, not play them this part and play them the other part and be like, Hey, do you think Ken's in the same room as this person? And they said, yes, you could be like, wow, you're really stupid because they're not. Uh, that would be mean. So don't do that. But, you know, you could. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying you could. Uh, as you can tell, I have been in the house <laughs> locked in here for many, many days. Uh, I have retaught myself how to play guitar, uh, which is I'm about as good as I ever have been, which is very bad. Uh, but... If you're a regular listener of the show, this episode will make a lot of sense. If you're new to the show and you're checking it out because you're a fan of my guest, welcome. I am, or was, I'm not currently, because nobody is a stand-up comedian, I'm a Boston-based stand-up comedian, been doing this show about seven years, and it's a lot of fun, and I've put out over almost 500 episodes, something insane like that. Uh, but if you've been listening to the show, you know that, weirdly, I have just been uh, sort of trolling, 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 I guess? That's not the the word I'm looking for. Uh, exploring. How about that? Spelunking. I've been spelunking YouTube for just different content, and I stumbled on my guest today through one of those lockdown uh, content uh, spelunks. His name is Joseph de Benedictus. He is a fine Canadian gentleman of Italian extraction. He has an excellent vlog YouTube channel. There's uh, a lot of fun stuff in there. It's just very good natured, very well done. It's funny and sweet. Uh, He's a smart guy. He's very likable, and I've loved his videos. So that's why I asked him to do the show, and he graciously agreed to do so. Uh, so he is great. I'll put up links to all his stuff, his YouTube channel. Uh, he also has a comedy channel that he did uh, some episodes of a, a roommate's uh, show that was very funny, and I uh, had a great time talking to him. And we looked at a Canadian TV guide, which uh, we have not done before. So that was pretty exciting for me. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode episode of TV Guidance Counselor with my guest, Joseph De Benedictus. TV is my friend and it has been always there for me in time of need. Live via satellite from the Great White North, Joseph, how are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thank you for doing this. These are the, the remote sessions have allowed me to expand my guest palette i guess what i'd say <laughs> yeah yeah no i think that's it's great for you i think <laughs> it's good for, i guess yeah it's it's kind of nice i don't have to travel and i'm like man i used to fly to la like three four five times a year to record with people this oh, wow. adds, adds up <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah oh my god I, for sure <laughs> but when i asked you to do this you're a little bit younger than me or a lot younger than me i think like a decade and um so you were like well canadian tv guide is different and i did have a canadian tv guide right and then you asked if you could also seen American TV Guide from the same era. Yeah. But I never asked you, had you ever seen an American TV Guide? I don't think so. And to be honest, I don't. I didn't really grow up with TV Guide in my house. I've seen them, but definitely not the American one. Canadian one, as I started looking through them, like, yeah, okay, I, I think I've looked at these before, but it's not something that I grew up with in the house. <laughs> but were you a big TV viewer? Yeah, I'm yeah, I mean, I, I was looking through a lot of it, and and even when I talked to my friends who reference old shows, and maybe it's because 
I seem older, but I'm not as old as people think I am. I don't get a lot of the references from TV <clears throat> yeah. and movies that they're saying. You're but, 21 years old, and everyone thinks you're in your mid 70s. Yeah, let people know. <laughs> no, I'm not 21. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it, it's interesting in that in that sense. And I was looking through shows, and I'm like, oh man, I'd watch I'd watch this, but it seems so normal. Like there's nothing like I don't feel like I'm interesting enough. But maybe I don't know. Oh, come, of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> because you you are a, a huge fan of magic. You're, yes, absolutely. You're one of, you're one of the Love magic it. kids. So. That's right. Yeah, I did magic when I was younger. David Blaine was a big uh, influence, and I was, you know, doing street magic. And I had my friends film me, and I would edit those videos together and put them on. On it was pre YouTube, so I'd put them on like my own crappy website. <laughs> I had a lot of fun, and then since then I've met a really good magician, Dergy Spade, who's like now one of my good friends. Um, we've done a bunch of stuff together. Me producing stuff. Uh, with him and uh, done like a, a magic reality show pilot episode with him and we did this whole thing and it, it's been lo a long journey through magic and it's been and i love it i love it did you first see that stuff uh, obviously the david blaine specials was that the first place you were exposed to that my uncle did did it when i was younger did some fun mad like he wasn't a magician he just did it for fun um yeah. so that and i think david blaine was the first time where it was like wow this is amazing and like i want to be like him <laughs> yeah and i've talked about it on this show before and i've had some magicians on that i people underestimate what those david blaine specials did because oh, huge yeah before that magic specials were david copperfield and we're talking like peter gabriel soundtrack full-on mm -hmm. obsession perfume commercial looking <laughs> stage show you exactly know? david blaine changed the game like it was the first time street magic was ever done really um or done on tv so yeah he he was very influential and everybody he he's why magic is where it is today it's because of him yeah a lot of kudos to him <laughs> i loved magic i loved music and i did martial arts and i was not good oh, at wow. any of the three because they all required <laughs> practice <laughs> and yeah. um, so i was like mediocre at all three sure. but all three of those things i got exposed to through television mostly mm -hmm. and you do you have one sibling yes I have one sibling. younger Who's brother yeah younger than you i'm a fellow oldest as well mm -hmm. you know we didn't have that cool older brother to show us stuff so i think a lot of the cool stuff we into we just kind of stumbled on on television yeah exactly i don't even know how david blaine came in to my life it was <laughs> I, I don't a lot know of people was, have said that fiona apple said that it's so odd i i just remember having i have a, like a vhs tape of one of his specials i don't know if that's why i first saw it or not like my somebody gave it to me or i i don't i don't remember really i should ask my parents <laughs> 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 well, uh, weirdly, I remember like even kids, I was in high school when the first special came out and even kids I know who were like fratty kind of bro dudes mm -hmm. were like exchanging tapes of that show. They're like, dude, you gotta see wow. this. Like that's yeah. how it, crazy that was for people to see. And that's now that's amazing. like the, the cliche of stuff. Yeah. I don't remember the timeline of, I must've watched it later. Um, well, like when his first one came out, I, I, I still don't know, but I, I did turn into the, the, the magician in high school, like where every morning for like half an hour, people would gather around me and I'd be doing tricks to them and like freaking people out. So that yeah. was, that was a fun time. <laughs> what was your go-to? Oh man. David Blaine does a sequence where the car keeps coming up to the top, like magic. So that's like the go-to. Um, that was always the one I'd start with usually. Well, there's a few things you can do. Like it just depends on, you might set something up to happen first, but if it doesn't happen, that's my go-to or something. You know, so, right, right. so there's just a bunch of, you know, a bunch of things. The one greatest thing is I did the, the card against the window. Oh yeah. In the middle of like high school and the cards went over and people were like running down the halls. It was good. It was a good time. <laughs> He's a witch. He's a yeah. witch. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, did you ever go back and watch any of the old specials? Like any of like the Doug Henning stuff? Speaking of Canada, uh, Doug Henning is Canada's finest export. <laughs> yes. I uh, know. I haven't seen any of his specials. No, I've seen oh, a wow. bunch of old stuff, but it's not, not his. Are you familiar with him at all? I know. I know of him. I oh, <laughs> it's hilarious. Really? I don't know okay. if you've ever seen a photo of him. <laughs> But I he, can't say that I have giant mustache. Like yeah, oh, huge, you know what I have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <clears throat> and he ha his whole thing was super seventies, and he was like, "Magic is like rainbows." Like, oh, it was just God. this okay. weird, like hippie. But he was a massive, massive celebrity here in the states for okay, like wow. five years. Really? <laughs> and there was a show called TV's Bloopers and Practical Jokes. Okay. Which 
uh, pretty much was what it says. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was hosted by Dick Clark and Ed McMahon, and they would play practical jokes on celebrities. And they did one on Doug Henning once. And the joke was, and I think they have this in Canada, you know, how on mattresses, they have those tags that say like, do not remove by penalty of law. Right. And people always joke about it, but it's, it's actually for the sellers. So they had Doug Henning and his wife in like a furniture store. And she was tearing all the tags off of things and like putting them oh, in her bag. That's <laughs> and hilarious. So they, they had the police come <laughs> and he, for a guy who's always like, everything's wonderful. Like right. he lost his mind. Like he was yelling and freaking oh my out. God. It's, it's a fantastic Doug Henning moment. Oh, it's, I'd uh, have it's to YouTube that if, if, <laughs> see if it's up there. That's amazing. Uh, so my favorite thing in this issue that I was immediately drawn to, and I don't know if you noticed it, but on the very first page, there is a letter from the president of Canadian TV Guide. Yeah. And it's like this whole screed about how the World Trade Organization is trying to screw them. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was very strange. <laughs> I mean, this was the beginning of the demise of magazines, I suppose. At this time, you know, I it was obviously worried. How odd. <laughs> and it gets really into, like, like what people buy the TV guide because they want to know what's on TV. Right. And this is this really weird in-the-weeds discussion about, like, Canadian licensing. <laughs> like, he says, an American publication with Canadian ads is called a, quote-unquote, split run. Very right. shortly, Canadian government will introduce... It's like this whole thing about... Right. The legalities of publishing. Why would that matter? Because <laughs> I think what was happening was this was after Clinton uh, uh, signed um, whatever the world, whatever the trade, North American Free Trade. Oh, right. NAFTA. NAFTA. And I think that meant you could import American magazines into Canada so you could sell I see. ads that were, because it wasn't, the territory wasn't the same, I guess. Oh, I see. With, I see. Okay, so they're worried that they're going to, yeah, the, the better, better magazines are coming into Canada and the advertisers are going to go there. For I guess, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, we still have a lot of that in place for the, you know, Canadian content laws um, and, you know, when... When and simultaneous substitution, you know what that is or no? No, I don't that, know. Simultaneous that's for TV uh, where there's an American show on, um, or we, you know, some, so we get a, we get American networks here as well, right? Um, but if it's, but then also they, the rights are sold to the Canadian broadcasters. So whoever gets to own that show, they can then get to substitute their ads onto the American network that's also coming into Canada. Oh, I see. So okay. if you're, even if you're watching it on like NBC. <laughs> As opposed to global TV, which is, you know, one, if you're watching on NBC, the commercials that global would run will also run on NBC I in, see. in Canada. So they cut them in so that they don't have a right. weird, unfair advantage for exactly. U.S. shows. Right. I've talked about the Canadian content laws because in America, we don't have that, obviously. No, right. And um, I used to work for Cartoon Network in London. Mm. And uh, where I sat was where, like, all the European Cartoon Networks were, like France. And, oh, cool. Okay. And, they all had similar laws where you had to, so a certain amount of hours every day have to be dedicated to content produced in that country. Yeah. And so like France, I think they got away with just showing the magic roundabout. <laughs> if you've ever seen okay. that. But Canada has very strong Canadian content laws as well. Yeah. And uh, I remember SCTV did an amazing parody of it because they had this uh, whole Canadian show about Ottawa and the beaver. It was right. like this whole thing. But uh, I don't think people realize that there's a, so there's a minimum amount of stuff you have to get that's from your country right exactly um which is good for someone like me who does produce canadian content it gives me a right. chance although it's like i don't know i haven't <laughs> i haven't got i haven't gotten that chance on tv before <laughs> yeah you're in toronto area right yep and so that is and i've called it this before and uh, on the show but it's essentially canada's new york i guess yep i'd say that <laughs> <laughs> be the way to say it. Yep. And uh, in the 70s and 80s, it was a tax shelter movie production hub. So you had tons of horror and exploitation movies produced there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then sort of TV production moved there before it kind of moved out to Vancouver. If I'm Yeah, it's still a very heavy here. Um, it's in Vancouver as well, very heavily as well. So, um, But here, it's, I mean, I lived downtown for a few years, like downtown Toronto and like and I worked, I worked downtown for many years and every day you'd see production trucks and, you know, streets close off because of filming. So it's very highly used <laughs> city. 
Is there a show that you watch that feels like home to you? <laughs> like the mm. Toronto you grew up in or the Canada you grew up in? Like, is there a show that's like a comforting? Oh man, I don't know. I, 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 not off the top of my head. No. Did you ever see Twitch city? Nope. Oh wow. Oh, Twitch city. It's amazing. It's uh, do you really? know Don, Mc- Don McKellar? No. Nope. See, this is, this is, you're going to find with me. I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> you probably utilize your brain for useful things as a president. <laughs> but uh, Don McKellar is a Canadian writer, actor. I'm trying to think of what people know him from best. He did an amazing movie called Last Night. Okay. And the premise of the movie is it's it's literally the apocalypse. And it's the last night on Earth. Like, I think it's a comet or something is going to kill everybody. And it's just these, like mini stories of what everybody's doing on their last night okay, and david cool. cronenberg is in it and he oh. plays a guy who works for the gas company and what he's decided to do with his last night is call every single gas company customer and thank them oh my god <laughs> it's just like this <laughs> weird thing but he did this show in i think 96 or 97 that is called um twitch city mm-hmm. and it's a really weird sitcom uh that's in toronto there's uh really? it has a lot of connections to the king of kensington uh, uh which is a 70s show okay and it's it's bizarre and surreal it's like a roommate's sitcom but what? is just bizarre really? in one episode cats take over the world oh my god <laughs> it's it, that that show is what i think of when i think of toronto and i have no idea if that's accurate uh, okay i i'm gonna tell you that it's probably not <laughs> yeah yeah i'm guessing um, it's not yeah but i i'm gonna have to Look at uh, some clips or something. Yeah, I'm just googling yeah. it now. I, I see it. No, I've never definitely never seen it before. It's very funny and weird. Some of the huh. kids in the hall guys are in it. Wow. Um, Molly, what's her name? Molly. Um, she was in Deadwood. Later. Molly Parker. Yes, yeah, Molly Parker. She. Yeah. That was the first thing I saw her in, and um, the guy Callum something who was in Battlestar Galactica and uh Jessica Jones uh that was the first thing I saw him in so it's uh it's a weird show but it's it's pretty fun Interesting. in a bizarre right. way it's I very funny look. <laughs> it's very funny <laughs> um so did you guys ha- use like a t- did you have like a uh, on screen guide or did you yeah, get like yeah, one of the like newspaper channel whatever channel or channel 5 or something had yeah, we just go watch that for 10 minutes and then you figure it out. <laughs> oh, the scroll. That, yeah, you're like, I just missed the channel I yeah, wanted. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Scrolled, yeah. That's the other thing where those uh, there was a, a very small window of time between print magazines and like the pull up the guide electronically. Right. Where, you, know, you had that channel and it really was, it took 10 minutes to scroll through all the channels uh, yeah. and it was on. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> it was a complete waste of time. You're oh, like, I know. Because you almost didn't want something you wanted to see come up because by the time it told you it was on, you had missed half of it. It's true. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> God damn. That's why I like going through this exercise of like finding the shows. I remember what I was watching at what times because I so I, you know you have your schedule of, of each night in your own mind so like it brought back like oh yeah at this time I would watch this yeah <laughs> so which yeah. I wonder what people do now because it, it was I, I, I'm a mess it, I'm a mess right yeah. now I don't, I, I don't know <laughs> I have no structure <laughs> no is that good like I'm like is that good or is it, I don't know if it's better or worse I can't I don't tell know. I don't know it was uh Although someone told me, is Hockey Night in Canada still on? Is that yes. Mondays oh, or something? Yeah, yeah, still, still, it's it's still on. It's still well, it's only on during the hockey season. Season, yeah. Someone told me that it, it was like if you ever wanted to commit a crime in Canada, if you did it like Monday nights between eight and ten o'clock or whenever it was that hockey night Saturday in nights, was on. yeah, yeah, Saturday, Saturday nights, nights. yeah, yes. like you would just get away with anything because sure, nobody yeah. was not watching it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> It's but probably a lot. It's probably it's still very popular, but it's probably I feel like it's a little less important and popular now. Yeah. Um, um, although it's gone, it's gone. It has its ups and downs, and it, it's gone through a lot of changes just in the past ten years, like hosts and stuff. And okay, it's, I think it's coming back to being like great. So. Because I don't, I can't think of anything else like that where, like, we know where everyone's going to be in the house watching this thing at sure. this time. Yeah, <laughs> that is, you're right. Um, th- it's true. I grew up doing that. You know, every Saturday night it was like exciting, and you'd hear the theme song come on, and that's why in Canada it was such a big deal when they lost the rights to the theme song. And like, oh, I didn't w- know that they lost the rights to the theme well, song. Well, yeah, they didn't want to. There was too much money. They didn't want to pay, so they had this big like. Uh, search for the next song and there was a whole TV special and like they found a new song 
Um, and then what, what, what happened is that TSN, which is the competing sports network, bought the rights to this song from that was Hockey Nights in Canada song. And now <laughs> they original? use it. And they still <laughs> use it in their hockey broadcast. So Ooh. it's it's so weird. But They got with their ex. <laughs> yes. It was <laughs> yeah. so strange. Oh, but that's a But everyone loved it, glued to the TV. <laughs> yeah. Man. So what made you want to get into television production? Was it just the fact that you were filming those videos to do magic stuff? I just knew from a young age. I don't know. I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I was in elementary school. Like I, I knew I was lucky. My, my dad would film a lot of stuff like with his JVC camcorder. Um, and I'd always, and if you look back, which is weird, I recently looked back at a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of old tapes digitized, like 80 tapes or something. And you watch back me as like, you know, four or five years old. I'm asking him to like, can I have the camera to hold and like film? <laughs> it's really weird because here I am now, I'm in video production, this is what I do, and yes. that's what I wanted to do when I was five, clearly. So, um, yeah, and I, so it was, you know, he, him, my dad filming a bunch of stuff all the time, when, you know, having a camera out while we're younger. Um, my dad also did like a, a, when he was young with the old, like, film camera, his home, he had a home film camera, um, and films a comedy show with his, his brothers and, and cousins and stuff called The Wee Show, which, funny enough, long story short, we used to watch that on like the old, you know, on, projected onto the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then skip many years, my cousin and I made that show into like an actual local TV show. <laughs> For about eight episodes. <laughs> was that cable access or was yes, it like a local? It was like a, okay. I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess, is, is that what you would call it? It's like, it's yeah, like local. community television. Yes, there. exactly. Yeah. So we had that, the, you know, this Rogers TV owns, you know, has those, there's what each region has uh, their own Rogers TV. Um, and we were on the Durham region. If, not that it makes any sense to you, but if anybody from Canada is yeah. listening or in particularly the GTA as in Toronto, they would know what that means. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so that was a big influence, I guess, you know, seeing my dad make these comedy sketches and stuff when he was young. Um, and then I wanted to do that. Um, and it just kind of spun out from there. I just, you know, I was making comedy sketches with my friends, you know, filming magic. Were you watching comedy shows? Like, were you yes, watching I, sketch so, shows? And- yeah, I was watching a ton of, and that's what, again, this reminded me when I looked through all the shows of what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have Comedy Central here, but we have the Comedy Network, mm-hmm. which is they take a lot of the shows as, and they over here with some other Canadian stuff. So I was watching a lot of the Comedy Network when I was young. Um, and, you know, I'll, we'll, once we look at I'll, th- yeah, th- yeah, those we'll come up yeah. in, in what I was watching. So we can we'll look at that in a sec. Um, but, yeah, it was that it was watching a lot of comedy, a lot of stand up, a lot of old sketch shows. And these I was watching. I think they were all very old com- from like I was watching in living color. Oh, yeah. Um, but I was I was it was in in 98, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was, started in 90. So it's about 10 years old. Probably. Yeah. So I was. There, yeah. yeah. And everything I think I was watching was from was older. Um, except for maybe some of the stand up. Let's dive in. Let's take okay. a look at uh, the first night here, which is Saturday night, I believe. Yep. Pull this up. Uh, TV Guide Week is very weird. It goes Saturday to Friday. I don't know mm-hmm. why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in 2004, they changed it for some reason. Like oh, that really? Mattered. Yeah. <laughs> 2004, it's, it now goes from Monday to Sunday. Or Monday... No, yeah, Monday to Sunday. Really? Um, yeah, and they still publish TV Guide for no reason. <laughs> it is of use to no one. Oh, <laughs> like, my God. Who needs this? It's it's That's, ridiculous. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, so we, we, Basically, I said, you're going to have to send me one that's the, the most recent and from Canada. Yes. Because I, you know, I was, I was young. I was about, you know, so you found one in 98. I was almost 10 at this point. It was August, uh, 98 is the one you sent me. August so, 15th. Yeah. Which is yeah. kind of the sweet spot I found. Like yeah? between okay. eight and 12 years old yeah. tends to be when people, like you have your own taste, mm-hmm. you know what you want to watch, you know what you want to do, but you can't leave the house. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah you can't <laughs> leave the house. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, let's dive in. What'd okay. you do at eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. This is funny being from Canada. We, you know, I'd watch America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a Canadian, a Canada's? Canadian? No, no. It was, this was it. Um, um, and I mean, I think you could submit from Canada from anywhere. Yeah, because by this time I'm looking and they've changed the name to just 
funniest home videos. Yeah, in in this, but I wonder if that's so. I, I there's a point I want to make later, but there's a difference in how both magazines write the same show. I don't know what they say and if they. I, I was trying to look for, it, but I couldn't find if they have funniest home videos or America's funniest home videos written in the U.S. version. Yeah, it would have but, been Sunday nights in the U.S. version. Um, oh, so I can actually pull it up. But uh, in in the U.K. where I lived for a while, weirdly the <laughs> The version of America's Funniest Home Videos in the UK is called You've Been Framed. <laughs> That's amazing. That's Because they're like, you know, they're framed up with the shot. Yeah. But it doesn't, to me, <laughs> that No, it sounds really... like a detective show or something. Yeah, like we, we <laughs> murdered somebody and everyone thinks you did it. Right. Uh, let me see. Sunday night in 1998. I got my New Hampshire edition here. I also am uh, grateful that you never questioned that it was weird that I had all these. <laughs> no. Why, uh, everyone needs something to do. It's true. <laughs> so I'd be like, oh, do you have a Canadian edition from this particular I mean, year? I, that's like, impressive. That was awesome. Like, sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, I am from New England. We did get some Canadian stuff like in northern New England and Maine and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, we would get some CTV stuff. Um, nice. Okay, where are we here? Uh, eight o'clock... America's funny some videos. Let's see, or it would have been seven, I think. Uh, where are we? No, it's not on in this edition because uh, they're showing the world television premiere of the 1995 epic Casper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. I see the little. Uh, yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, this is the U.S. edition of in '98 yes. in October yeah. that you also sent me to compare. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's why it didn't have America's Funniest Some Videos uh, okay. in that edition. So there. we will we'll have to we'll have to move along. Then we won't find out what they actually wrote for that show. I know. Although my favorite thing about the description is. Oh, I had that written down too. Yeah. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> So you're, you're looking in the TV guide. You're like, I'm I'm curious about funniest home videos, but I want to know more about it before I commit to that hour. Mm -hmm. And why don't you read the people the description? Yeah, including a kid who really gets into his birthday cake. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's the whole description. They're describing one clip out of hundreds that they probably yes. show on that show. What every day? Why even? Just, you, you couldn't give a general description of the show? Yeah, it's a funny <laughs> clip. Like, yeah, and like someone's going to be like, you know, I was on the fence, but uh, yeah. why did that kid in the birthday cake is on there? <laughs> I can't afford not to watch it. Yeah, very yeah. weird. Uh, so that's an hour. And then what'd you do at nine o'clock? Oh, you know what? I didn't realize that was an hour show. <laughs> oh, did you do an 830? I did an 830. Um, I went to In Living Color because Comedy Network... Um, that's what I'd probably go to go to that. I'd go to just, you know, habitually go to that network without knowing what was on. So uh, when I was bored, so it would be okay. Watching in living color. That's um, another thing that I just totally forgot about generationally until you mentioned it. We all had like a home network. Like yeah, yeah. when you got home, you turned the TV on, you went to like this neutral network that was like, and then you'd go out from there. You're like, that's just on. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and that's what I would do. You're, and I mean, this is basically the basis for half of the shows I think I'm going to mention is because of their, <laughs> on the few yeah. things that I watched. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, uh, that would have been on the Comedy Network. And was it, was it odd watching in Living Color of all things? Like, how different was that from your experience? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't know. It, I was just watching comedy. I, I didn't yeah. think too much. I was like, is that Jim Carrey? I think I know him from the, the movies I like. I, that's weird. Yeah. What's he doing there? But, I, you know, not knowing that, okay, this was what he did before <laughs> at yeah. the time. Is that, that J-Lo dancing? Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. There's a show that I'm intrigued by, which I assume is a Canadian show, that's on Channel 25, and it's called Freaky Stories. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bunch of, um, I think 25 is, is that YTV? Uh, it is YTV, yeah. Yeah, so that was a, that was a big kids network that okay. I, 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 like every kid watched in Canada. <laughs> um, the, the, so I, Freaky Stories, I think I, my next show was on YTV at 9 p.m. called Goosebumps, is Goosebumps, which. Okay. So I think it's, it, and, and the, then, and then at 9.30, Are You Afraid of the Dark? So they're so, both. They're, they're all like these just weird 
stories of, about being scared and stuff like that. So I think is Goosebumps, Goosebumps was that an American show? It was, um, right. but Are You Afraid of the Dark was Canadian. That's a Canadian but, show, yes. Did, but did, are you, you get, did you get that? Over we there? did. We we got it on Nickelodeon. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I think the it, the rights ex- they exchanged their rights pretty seamlessly. That's what I was gonna wonder if like sister networks was like YTV and Nickelodeon. Yeah, it um, might have been. Because Goosebumps, I don't think aired on Nickelodeon here. But Are You Afraid of the Dark was a linchpin show on Nickelodeon's Saturday Night schedule, which they called Snick for really? Saturday Night at Nickelodeon, the- and uh, it was it was like the breakout show. Really? It aired in a block with a show called Clarissa Explains It All um, okay. with, uh, I'm forgetting her name, but she played Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Melissa Joan Hart. Right. Um, and uh, Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and a show called The Adventures of Pete and Pete and, and Are You Afraid of the Dark? It was the weirdest thing. Crazy. Yeah. Wow. Did- yeah. And fun fact, uh, one of the main actors in Are You Afraid of the Dark is now uh, an anchor on the Weather Channel here in Canada. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's such a Which- weird thing. The is curly-haired this, kid? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think he had kind of like a, almost like a bowl cut. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That's fantastic. I know, yeah, it's great. Because <laughs> the, uh, blonde, the blonde girl was kind of a breakout star, whose name I can't remember, but she played oh, man. Cher on the U.S. Clueless TV show. Um, okay, no, I, I can't picture who, yeah. the, who, you're, who you're talking about. Yeah, this is the one with the evil leprechaun, which is a particularly terrifying episode. Oh, is that, is that the description? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. A young boy lends the part of a leprechaun in the school play. That's terrifying. <laughs> I don't know how he feels about his birthday cake, but uh, <laughs> <there we> go. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to Sunday. What'd you do Sunday night? 8 p.m. with uh, <laughs> The Simpsons. Now, I that would have been their, like a new episode, right? Yes, Sunday nights um, at 8. Yep. So I didn't necessarily have anything else at 8 p.m. And I know I definitely didn't watch the new episodes of The Simpsons at this time. I was always watching reruns. So I'm just going with this because The Simpsons are like, well, one of my go-to shows. Right. Um, so I may not have watched it in that time, like, like a new episode. But if I was watching at 8 p.m. at that day, I probably would have found it. <laughs> This was when people thought The Simpsons got really bad for a while. It, okay. it was like late 90s into the early 2000s when a lot of the original people left mm-hmm. before they kind of got their groove. Um, and I cannot believe that that show's been on for 30 years. Yeah, it's amazing. I, do you still watch it at all? Mm, no. I mean, I, I, I have them. I think I have like the, the new episodes recording, but I have like all of them still there to watch since yeah. we got our TV in this in this house. <laughs> So, like, so you're saving them for like, say, a global pandemic. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Oh man, <laughs> this pandemic has made me have less time because now I'm running a daycare here for my one and a half year old. <laughs> yeah. Oh so. yeah. That's the thing. I'm like, I get. I'm so much less productive for whatever reason. Yes. Yeah. It's it's tough, but it is. It's it's good at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it. Well, who knows? But uh, the Simpsons. <laughs> to, I've. I caught an episode, like a new episode when I was flying. I was on mm. a plane. I wasn't, I'm not physically capable of flying. Uh, <laughs> whatever anyone tells you, it's a lie. Um, but I was weirdly shocked because they use like cell phones. Yeah, I, yeah you're like, right. It's very like current. <laughs> which, of course, like why wouldn't it be? Right. But for some reason, because... Like when that show started, I was the same age Bart is. Okay. And now I'm the same age Homer is. Oh my god. <laughs> and they don't age on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So that's weird. That is and weird. It, it, it was almost like even though it was new, it was like it was like seeing an old episode that they had gone in and edited in cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very yeah. I like that's a good uh, explanation like, of it. It's like what happened? This is so bizarre. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. You're right. You know, I, I do. I saw something. Maybe it was like a year ago when I watched like the, a new episode. But yeah, it, it's it's a weird feeling. It's not the Simpsons that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess is makes sense. Like it's mm-hmm. not. I think it's for a certain age group, mm-hmm. and I think you like age in and then age out, and the show's still there for people in that little window. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you know what I, what I do remember is because they were coming to Canada. Like Simpsons came to Canada, and that's why. I watched that at new episode. It was like a couple years ago. Um, there was a whole episode. Of- oh yeah, the Canadian. Ep- okay, yes, I remember. Yeah, that. yeah. So I was. I, it was. A, they really took on stereotypes. They really. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do you have? Do you have 
two questions, and okay. you don't have to answer now if you need to think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the the greatest representation of Canada on television? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the most offensive representation of Canada oh, on television? <laughs> they're both the same. I, <laughs> they're both the same. No, I don't. I, I, oh, man, that's really hard. <laughs> I, I don't. Can, I don't watch enough to to make an educated. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, and for you, answer. just to you, like the a most, thing that you're like, that's not Canada. That's, oh man. Um, or if someone was like, "What's the best Canadian show that you like?" And I want to watch it. Tell me what it is. What would you What would you recommend? I'm gonna have to come back to that because okay. I I I don't watch enough right now. Like, yeah. Or and I don't. My memory is terrible. So. Um, let me think about that. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. I need to look and, at some titles. <laughs> and even if you don't remember and you want to email me later, I can yeah. put it on the uh, outro of the episode. Okay, so okay. A little teaser there. Um, so we're doing The Simpsons at 8, eight o'clock, which by 98, this is summer of 98. I am, I just graduated high school. I'm going into college. I was in a band. Nice. I probably was not watching The Simpsons. <laughs> I'm really? thinking. Okay. I'm trying to see what else I would even watch that night, and I'm definitely not watching Touched by an Angel. Mm. Uh, and then there's this weird thing that's called Passionate Eye. Oh, isn't ba that like a news thing? It's based on recordings of candid telephone conversations. Hello, Mr. President looks at the first 100 days of Lyndon Baines Johnson's presidency. Weird. Uh, I, it's familiar, but I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what the show's about. So I yeah, need your it seems to be like weird LBJ fan fiction yeah. uh, for some reason. So I guess I'd go Simpsons or This Old House. That's probably what I'd go with, actually. I don't know that. So again, I don't know what that show is. This old oh, wow. House. This yeah. Old House. So that's a, uh, I'm surprised it actually aired in Canada. Um, that is still on. It's actually produced here in Boston at our PBS what? station, which is our public television. And, uh, it's, it's a home improvement show, but they take an entire season to do one house. Oh my God. <laughs> and they started in 1981, uh, wow. which is amazing. And at so 85, they did a house in the town I grew up in. And so I got to go watch wow. them film it. And it was like, Hollywood's come to Melrose. They're filming this old house. That's amazing. It was so, wait, that, w that was a PBS show? Yeah, it's okay. it's still on. It's still so produced. That's incredible. Yeah, that's a PBS show. That's, um. do you know who, uh, oh my God, everyone's going to get mad at me for forgetting his name now. Uh, oh man, Bob Vila. Bob no. Vila was the host and he quit because he got a little big for his britches and uh, <laughs> he had a bunch of other shows. The show Home Improvement with Tim uh, yeah. Allen, that's based on Bob Vila. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And wow. Vila shows up on the show a few times as like oh, his rival. That's amazing. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, PBS is interesting because I think we, we got, we got it or we still get it. Um, but like, that's the main public station right in, in the united states it's our only public station and it's right and it's only and it's semi-public too it's not it's not like the cbc or bbc well, it's weird yeah but the cbc has like like entertainment shows like they have let network type shows they don't <clears throat> right. act as if as pbf as pbs does right it, same with BBC, which doesn't either. PBS right. is a weird thing. Okay, um, okay, okay. I, I yeah. wanted you to say it. <laughs> yeah. No, PBS is very strange. It's 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 supposed to be like very heady and arty. Like, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. we're we're funding educational programming. Right. Um, but you know they like Sesame Street is PBS, Mister Rogers, those kinds of shows here. Um, but then like they would also show stuff like Red Dwarf, which was like a channel four UK sitcom Weird. or Mo money Python first aired on PBS in the what? States. Um, huh. really bizarre. So it, uh, just cause it was British. They're like, this is quality. Television here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. It, and then, uh, in Boston on the PBS channel, we'd get all kinds of Canadian kids shows from the seventies would be on all day. Really? So there was a show called It Figures and one called Read All About It, which was these, it was like Doctor Who and it was terrifying, but I don't think it was supposed to be. Okay. And it was these kids who inherited a newspaper from their father and the newspaper was actually a front to like fight these extra dimensional beings. Oh my. But it, but the show was designed to teach kids to read. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Real weird. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a, Cana that's a Canadian show? It's a Canadian show. Huh. And like Degrassi, that, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the original, that aired on PBS here. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Yeah. That's so really got, strange. Really strange. There was a show called Owl TV as well from Canada that we got that okay. was on PBS. And that was like, that was bizarre. I'm sorry. I'm talking so much. No, uh, <laughs> Owl TV was like a, a kid's science show and different segments. And one of the segments was this kid whose best friend was a skeleton. <laughs> this was live action called Mr. Bones. And he oh had God. like light bulb eyes and he would, he was just kind of annoying and he would teach the kid about stuff. But like this kid was so like, Oh, come on, Mr. Bones. Stop. Like he was just constantly. Oh no. It, it's very, Oh my dark. God. I just Googled it. I remember, yeah. I do remember seeing this and okay. I, I never wa- actually watched it, but I like, I just flipped through and be like, what the yeah. hell? And it was <laughs> so weird. It was like, why is this kid cursed with the skeleton? Who's like, won't yeah. leave him alone. Yeah. And is teaching him about the body. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> so these are all the ways I learned about Canada. As you can see, I have a weird, uh, yeah. a very weird view of it, as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, so we're on Sunday. We did eight thirty Simpson, eight, Simpsons, what would you eight thirty? Eight thirty. So um, the TV guide says that right after the eight p.m. there's another episode of The Simpsons. Yes. So uh, I may have stayed, or I would have gone onto the Comedy Network and watched Comedy Now, which is uh, which is a stand-up show. I, like I think it's like an hour set, um, local, not I mean Canadian comedians. Usually. Okay. Um, so that's something that was often I would watch, um, and it was on quite a bit. So. Oh, and, and Dr. Katz aired as well, I see. Okay, here's, what's Dr. Katz? Dr. Katz was a Comedy Central show here okay. in the States. And it was Jonathan Katz, who's a stand-up comic. And it was essentially a way to do stand-up, but in a format that didn't look like stand-up. So the premise was it was animated. Oh. He's a therapist, and comics would be on basically doing their act, but like at with the therapist. Oh, interesting. Um, and I see that that's on, uh, I think comedy, comedy channel, Co- comedy channel. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm 44, which I is, guess uh, that's, that's one I, I, I must have not watched. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It was animated and probably seemed weird. Yeah. Uh, and then nine o'clock, what'd you do? Simpsons uh, on Teletoon, which is, um, on, like the, <clears throat> the, another cartoon network we had here. Does it, what, what would the equivalent be? Uh, Nickelodeon. Can- Maybe Nickelodeon, probably like either Fox Kids, maybe or like okay. uh, maybe Cartoon Network. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think Cartoon Network would be would be it. Yeah, that sounds about right. So you're uh, like you're just like four hours of Simpsons mostly. That's it. Uh, I didn't watch. Uh, yeah. I didn't go uh, and, and any comedy thing, and that's it. Because <laughs> there's some weird stuff. Like at nine o'clock, uh, there is a TV movie on TFO Cinema. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. It's on Channel 11, and it's called a made-for-TV movie from 1993. Whose child is this? The War for Baby Jessica. <laughs> oh no! Do Channel you, 11. Do, that was on. I think it was called On TV. Uh, okay. Um, that was the name of the channel, and it was like a. I still think it's like a Hamilton area, or Hamilton Halton area channel. Um, again, talking for the locals here. No, no. That's this is what <laughs> this is the content that we want. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. But do you know who baby Jessica is? No, no, I don't. <laughs> in 1987, this little girl fell in a well in, I think, Georgia. Okay. And she was stuck in this well for like three days. Oh, my and God. And it interrupted all television in the United States. <laughs> and it really? was like wall-to-wall, 24-hour coverage of getting this girl out of the well. And there were like experts on, and they were showing like diagrams of how to get into this okay. well. <laughs> wait, actually- wait, 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 wait. Is is this because I there's a Simpsons episode like yes, this? Yes, they parodied it on The Simpsons where Bart falls in the water. <laughs> so yes. a lot of things that that I end up learning, I'm like, wait, no, that happened on The Simpsons. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes. Oh, so that's how I learned. <laughs> that is a real thing. Well, you know what's funny is like uh, so many people I know, especially for Twilight Zone episodes, know them from The Simpsons. <laughs> yes, I think <laughs> you're right. Yeah. They've yeah. seen those more than the extra episodes. Yep. So Baby Jessica, this is a TV movie that's not about her falling down the well. This is mm. about her parents getting a divorce later and having a, <laughs> having a divorce of who gets the kid. Oh, my God. So is like, it like, what? Why? Uh, yeah, why? <laughs> it's not even the thing that makes her interesting. <laughs> no. Oh my god, that's yeah, funny. It's very strange. <laughs> uh so that's Sunday night. Monday what'd you do? Okay, so um I there's a show I picked not necessarily because I would have watched it then, 
but because I sometimes watch it now, it's called This Hour Has 22 Minutes, and it's a very uniquely Canadian CBC produced show. Um, oh, I saw this on your episode with Canadian shows versus Merch. Yes, okay, yes. Yeah. So they do a bunch of sketch stuff. It's definitely changed and it's gotten probably better now and then more, you know, more with the times uh, with production and stuff like that. But, um, you know, they back then they did a lot of great stuff. Rick Mercer was a big name on the show and he did this thing to where he would it was called the segment was called Talking to Americans, where he'd ask <laughs> them, you know, he'd ask, it'd be from the Canadian perspective asking he'd literally go to the U.S. and like ask questions and like it's like. Can you congratulate Canada for getting running water or something? And then they'd be, and then you'd get people to seriously be like, congratulations, Canada. So it was like making Americans look bad, but like we loved it. Because well, we, we are really stupid to be no. honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so it was, and that show was on for like, it's still on. It's right? still on. It's still on. And it's been on, it started in like the 80s or something, right? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it, it probably did. Uh, uh, you know what? Here, this hour has 22 minutes. It's going to tell me right now. 1993? Okay, 93. So it had been on a couple of years by then, but not... Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was like a version of not not the 9 o'clock news or something. And I don't know why I mm. thought that. It seems totally different. Um, yeah. So it's the same joke as MTV used to have a stand-up show called the Half Hour Comedy Hour. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that seems to be the same <laughs> titular joke that they fit into that. Um and so the, the cast changes all the time. It's still like uh, a constant. The cast for this hour is 20. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Now there's different people. and But they they had, you know, they have their, it's kind of like an SNL feel. Right. Um, as the cast changes. I mean, the cast is much smaller than SNL. <laughs> yes. But. Uh, well, with the conversion. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there, I'm trying to think of, do you know a Canadian stand-up named Mike Wilmont? No, See I don't. So when I lived in England, I started doing stand up there. And mm -hmm. weirdly, there's a ton of Canadians who do stand up there because it's actually easy. Well, it was, but things are different now. Mm -hmm. But it was easier to get a work visa for a Canadian to do stand up in the UK than it was for them to do stand up in the US. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, Mike Wilmot hosted a, uh, he's a Canadian guy and he hosted, a, uh, co hosted a talk show with, um, Rich Hall there that I used to go to all the time. But, Total, uh, total tangent on my part. Uh, so you're watching that, and then at eight thirty, what are you doing? Everybody loves Raymond. I do like that show, although I never got into it. Yeah, I don't know. It's I, we still like throw it on up here. Uh, it, my wife and I watch it once in a while and reruns here. Like it's just it's it's a good like. There's nothing on, and we don't want to start a Netflix war. <laughs> let's, let's it's just, Switzerland. Yeah, <laughs> everyone loves Raymond. It's just easy. It's just. And some of the some of the bits they're real good. <laughs> oh yeah, no, up. it's a great it's a great cast. It's a well named show. Yeah, every well named <laughs> show. The if writing is very interesting. Um, and have you, uh, if you've seen somebody feed Phil, yeah, I have seen it. Yeah, they were he he's yeah. the, he was the executive producer and like one of the right basically helped make the show what yeah. it is. Uh, Everybody loves Raymond. So I knew I, of, I knew show. about him. And him as a good character before he did the show. Like I watched, I watched some of him talk, and I watched some of his things. And he did a documentary called "Exporting Raymond" or something. Yes, yes. We went to Russia. Yeah, and he basically t taught them how to make that show. Well, that was that was awesome. I it was, was lo insane. I loved the show, and then he stood out as a very good character for a reality show. And now yeah. it's why clearly he has one, and it's somebody feed Phil. So. Yes, very good. It's the concept of exporting shows to other countries, like remaking them in that country is fascinating to me and so bizarre. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't know if that's happened with any US first Canadian shows because they'll usually just import the show. Mm -hmm. Um but like Married with Children has been made in 27 countries. Wow. <laughs> There's a version there and when I lived in England, they did an English version of that 70s show. Oh, wow. And like Fez was like a German exchange <laughs> oh student. God. It was really weird. It's like some bizarro version no of way. stuff. Uh, I think I would have watched Father Ted. I don't know what that is. So Father Ted is an Irish comedy show mm -hmm. uh, that Graham Linehan did, who did the IT crowd. If you've seen the IT crowd, no. um, a few other things. It's a very funny sort of surreal sitcom about priests. Oh, <laughs> huh. it's very good. All right. Uh, 
Uh, then what would you do? Uh, nine o'clock. So nine o'clock, there would have been another Raymond or Simpsons. Where at normal, there was. I rem- and this is what I remember: is that nine p.m. was like a, a key Simpsons time every weeknight, <laughs> or right, actually right. maybe every day. Uh, didn't even matter what day it was. So like, I would stick on Raymond, or I can go to the Simpsons. So yeah. So it sounds like you could, if you wanted to, you could have just done two hours of Simpsons. I did often. Every night. (laughs) I did. Here's a weird thing, because this is the Canadian edition, Mm -hmm. but airing on Channel 16, Miss Teen USA. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Uh, Would it it would probably, I mean, it would have been airing there in in the US as well, right? Yeah. It would have been live. Yeah. Uh, So it was live because again, we have the NBC, ABC affiliates from Buffalo and where I am, we get the Buffalo affiliates. And they, their channels come here. We get ABC, ABC, all their programming. So, yeah, that's why it's on. <laughs> Is there Canadian pageants? Do you have like a Miss Canada pageant that airs on TV? Uh, I don't know that it airs on TV, but there definitely is one. Um, but I could be wrong. There, 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 I could be wrong in the fact that it, 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 it might air on TV. I, I'm not sure. That just seems like such a gaudy American thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just what was on on the American channel. So if you're flipping yeah. through, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Uh, and then I think it's Much Music yep. uh, has a show called Big Ticket on. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but I it's, know Much Music. <laughs> it seems to be unplugged performances. Oh, and okay. This particular episode, Pearl Jam does unplugged selections. But I read it and I wondered if it was the same performance from Pearl Jam's MTV Unplugged or if it was like an additional version they did or like a different show they did. Mm, I don't Um, know. It's, it's very possible to be either answer. (laughs) Yes. Um, Yes. I I don't have a good one for you. So, so was it, there was the box, right? That was a music channel in Canada. Uh, I've never heard of that. Okay. So much music's like the MTV. Yes. Okay. Um, And I don't know that it's, it's been rebranded so many times now. I don't even know if it exists anymore or if it's even called much music anymore. So, I but mean, yeah. MTV isn't either. It's not even a music right. No, I, anyway. Yeah. Well, that was weird because yeah, I used to watch much music all the time or, you know, all, you know, music videos and like the hosts were cool. And so that was, that's also one of the go-to channels at some point in my life. Um, and then MTV did come here and also had the channel eventually, but that didn't last very long. So that was a weird thing. Yeah, like the, um, the original comes up and then just gets defeated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of your episodes, you go to Pizza Pizza. Yes. And here in America, if you said Pizza Pizza, they would just think Little Caesars. Yeah, that's not at all what it is. Which is, us. it's not affiliated at all. And then Little Caesars came to Canada and had the slogan Pizza Pizza. Right. But then they changed it because it was ridiculous because everyone's like, why are they saying the other pizza place yeah. at the end of their commercials? And they it's changed like, it. They changed it to hot. The, the guy says here, hot and ready, as opposed to pizza, pizza. It's like if Tim Hortons came down here and their slogan was Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah that's exactly, <laughs> exactly right. Oh, that's so great. What? That's that'll That paints the picture perfectly for all your American listeners. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a bizarre campaign. Yes, yes, it uh, would. To do that would be very strange. And then uh, 9.30, what'd you do? So 9.30, it, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays versus Oakland Athletics, the you know, okay. Oakland A's are on. So I, I, it seems to be a late game. At that time, I probably wouldn't have been able to stay up too much later. But maybe my parents would have made an exception because of the sports, the Jays. You had a set bedtime? No, but... I mean, not forever. I couldn't stay up. <laughs> yeah. Ten o'clock was too late. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Do you have a bed? Do you have, well, your kid's really young. I was yeah, like, yeah. If you have like a seven, seven, time. seven, between seven and seven thirty. Yeah. <laughs> Does she fight you about it? No, she's yeah. She's she knows the routine. She's yeah. yeah she's very young still. It's a year and a half. So she's oh yeah. She doesn't yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. knew kids who were like around two or three. They're like it's not that time. Yeah, that, <laughs> we're not there yet. yet. We're not there yet. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> well, oddly, like a lot of kids I knew growing up, they could tell their bedtime by like you can go to bed after this show, like a specific show. Right. Sure. Because yeah, it yeah. was on at a certain time, and I'm like, how do parents do that now? Because we don't have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. New. <laughs> Things yeah. are changing. You can go to bed after the second Simpsons. <laughs> that's it. That's right. That's exactly. That's exactly it. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, what'd you do? Okay, eight p.m. Liar, liar, the movie, the Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey movie? movie. I love that. Love that movie. <laughs> Is that your favorite Jim Carrey flick? I don't know if my favorite, but it's definitely a, f- a fun one and one that I we a few of us, my friends, quote to each other randomly. Do you have a favorite Carrey movie? Uh, probably the Truman Show. 
Yeah, that is a good movie. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, I haven't rewatched it. Have you rewatched it recently? I've seen it. I've seen it a lot, just in reruns, just on TV or just randomly. Yeah. So I, yeah, I. From the last time I rewatched it, I still liked it. <laughs> Does it? So I saw it in the theater, and I honestly don't think I, I've seen it since then. Really? Um, oh wow! And I, I'm curious to see it now, given how far reality TV, uh, how far it's come, doesn't really seem like the right way to say it. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> what it's become. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it still holds up. I, I, I think it's still like a, an, an idea that's almost still fresh, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll rewatch that. Because they I haven't do done, like, like I, they haven't done that yet, have they? No, because I... And I don't no. think they should, but, no, they, no. but like that idea is very still crazy and wild and fun. Yeah, the they've time. never done it where the person doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the actually key. you know what they did do. They call they they call it the uh, it was this one off called the Joe oh Schmo Joe Schmo show. show. Yes, oh, I love that concept. It was so yes. great. That poor guy, uh, that Kristen Wiig, she was in the first season of Joe Schmo. She was one of the improv actors. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't even realize yeah. that. That's she amazing. plays like Dr. Pam or something like that. Yeah, oh that God. I love that. I totally forgot about that. When My favorite thing about that show is when they reveal to him that it's all fake. Yeah. Just, he goes, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if, yeah. Nobody, I, if nobody knows what we're talking about, the, everyone was an actor except for this one guy who thought it was a real, yeah. like a reality show. And it was amazing. I, lo- I love the even if it was actually all fake. I, the concept and it was it was just great. <laughs> the show and he thought he was on a show called The Lap of Luxury. Yes, that's that right. It was like a bachelor meets like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire reality show. But yeah, he was the it was all made up except he, f- for his benefit. Yeah, <laughs> which it was is great. So great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember they he started crying because there was an old guy on the show who was supposed to be like the old crotchety guy and uh he got really close with the guy and when the mm-hmm. guy got sent home, the Joe Schmo guy was like really upset and yeah. they had this behind the scenes where the writers were like, Oh shit, what uh what do we do now? <laughs> this kid. Oh, so sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh but again it shows you like it's not it, it's it's kind of powerful mojo you know to yeah. do that to somebody even it in is. a silly context like that yeah. well so i i think a lot of yeah a lot of my influence comes from like that where you're you're kind of you're giving somebody an experience and then revealing to them that experience that they've right. just been through and like it's this amazing moment. so like that's why i love magic and that's what i in the, the magic pilot that i did we came up with this crazy thing that we did that we ended up doing eventually to the one to this one guy who and it worked out great and the guy is, was awesome and he loved it um but like yeah th- those types of things i i really enjoy well you know some sort of playing with time or somebody's perception of what's actually right. happening and like manipulating them in a good way to think something when actually something else is happening so right uh, i love all of that and that's why i love to make videos <laughs> but there's still concept there's- they're still willing participants, though. Like yes, they yeah, know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you're, they don't know how you're fooling them or what you're going to do, but they know that like you're going to do something, right? Yeah, instead exactly. Instead of just like, <laughs> well, the, so the, what we ended up, what we did to get them in first was something that they didn't know a magic trick was happening. It was a hidden camera. Oh, thing okay. Where we did this magic, we did this thing where it seemed, and this was before, this was before like the Carbonero effect. This was before anything that was like really hidden camera-y magic mm-hmm. where and so it was to, to me it was like pretty new um where we yeah we we did this thing like that was almost a miracle really but they didn't know that it was a magician they didn't know we were filming um and then we re- eventually we take them then through this thing and then we reveal to them this is what happened and we reveal to the audience like how right. we did it so it was yeah that I oh so that. you'd actually show how you did it Yes, one aspect of it we did. There's a few things we didn't say just to keep right. you on edge. But, but yeah, we would show there, that all lives. If you go, if you want to see it, it it's uh, if you just it's called Think About It was the name of the show. And if you search my name and think about it, you probably find the whole episode. Okay. I'll put links up too on the site when I post this. But like, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a huge Penn and Teller fan. And, oh uh, yeah, they're great. And they used to do that all the time growing up where they'd show you how they did the trick. Yes. And I learned later that that was bullshit. Like yeah, the, that's not how bullshit. they did it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that's part of it. So, yeah. And that's, I think, again, we, part of what we did as well, where you'd, I mean, any of that is, is 
like even when somebody says, you know, I'm oh, I'm reading your mind like this, and I'm, oh, I see you did the body language. Like they're telling you, but they're that's all that's all bull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, because you can't you you can't do be right every time if that's what you're doing. And right. It, it, right. it has to be succinctly. So there's a different method, but it's all in the presentation. If if that's how they're doing it, that's how they're getting you to go along with the story. That's part of the the magic, uh, you know, kind of smart part of the presentation of this this trick. Um, which is, I mean, I love it. I, I love it, all of it. <laughs> I, I love the Carbonero effect, but there's some that I get, I feel, it's like when they do stuff where people just think they're going to die. Yeah, that's not It nice. gets too much like scare tactics. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. and I don't, which was, did you ever see that show? <laughs> scare tactics, yes. Yeah. That was yeah. created by a kid I went to high school with. No way. Who was just like kind of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> And that so, is perfect. Wow. So when I see that show, I'm like, yep, that's the show he would have come up with. Oh my God. Because <laughs> there, there are people, go. they think they're going to die. Like that's, yeah, that's too that's much. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, you make them think that something magical is happening is a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing that at eight uh, on Tuesday. You said, did you tell me what you're watching yeah. at eight o'clock Tuesday? Yeah, it was Liar, Liar, Liar. liar. Yeah, that's oh, how liar, we got liar. onto that's this right. tangent. So you're doing that all night. You're doing the two. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, is that... I think it said it ended at nine thirty, so I picked okay. two more. Um, I at nine nine thirty. I I I don't know that this would be my go to, but I would watch Fresh Prince here and there. So nine thirty, I'd say, okay, we'll flip to Fresh Prince. Yeah, um, which I think it ended in in the states by ninety eight. Um, okay, yeah. I again, I watched all reruns. Yeah, <laughs> of a lot of stuff. The, are you afraid of the dark? Is on again at nine thirty. Oh, there you go. I could go to there as well. Yeah. So. And did you I, see? Did you see ahead. the new one? By the way. A new witch. Are you are you afraid of the dark? There's a new one. Yeah. I, oh wow. It, they did it this year, um, huh. and it aired on Nickelodeon here. I don't. Maybe it didn't air in Canada. It's actually really awesome. Really? Oh <laughs> it's, wow. It's uh, it's the anthology, but they also have like an overall um, like narrative. So hmm. it's it's got like a six episode arc too. That's it was, cool. It was cool. It was very well done. Uh, I would recommend. Uh, right. I know you were, sorry, I interrupted you. You were. Doing oh, I was going to say I, I I picked one outside of the range here at 10 p.m. because oh, yeah. I wanted to mention this. It's called Open Mic with Mike Bullard. Basically, that's that's like our big main like it was our only to- night talk show, and Mike Bullard was the host. It was a Canadian who filmed it in Toronto. I even went to one of the tapings, and you know they interviewed actors and stuff like that. But like that was the show that Canada watched. As a, if you know, if you cared to watch it, but like if right. you wanted to watch a Canadian talk show, uh, you know, uh, a nighttime show, nighttime talk show that compared to the Tonight Show or whatever, this was the show. Was it every night or was it a yeah, weekly yeah. show? Yeah, every, week, every week, every week, every week night. Okay. So, um, oh, weirdly, also there's something called Pop on the History Channel. I guess if they're showing the decline of Western civilization by Penelope Spheris, which is a weird oh. thing to show. Uh, <laughs> friend of the show, guest of the show. Oh wow. Um, so you went? Did you go to a lot of tapings in Toronto? Or was that like one not, of the few tapings? No, to? that was just one of the few. I went with some friends. Um, or, uh, yeah, it was it was very it was fun. Again, because I because even because I loved you know the production of, of things, and I wasn't a professional yet. I was still young and right, not even in you know university to take it. I, that's what I en- ended up going to university for. But I was still like aspiring to do it. So watching a live taping was like amazing. But I didn't get to get to many. <laughs> Um, 98, and I should mention that this was the year that Tom Green broke in America. Oh, really? And so okay. he had a, a, essentially a cable access show, I believe, in Canada. I don't, uh, I don't know. I was, again, I wasn't, I think he was a bit older. Yeah. Like I was a bit young for his humor at the time, and I was, or, right. or you know, his, um, this is his target. <laughs> yeah. He had like, it, I think it was a cable access show. It was prank based. Uh, okay. And yeah, then yeah. MTV started showing MTV in the States for some weird reason started showing basically re edits of this guy's Canadian cable access show. <laughs> wow. Really? Which is super weird. That's weird. And he got a movie deal and he was dating Drew Barry. Like it was just like, huh? That's a real weird story. Uh, how that, that is- happened. Could have been you, Joseph. Could have been yeah. you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Wednesday night, eight o'clock. What'd you do? Uh, there's a show called Comics. I believe it's just it was just another kind of stand-up show on Comedy Network. So I'd, I'd again, that's one of the things I would do is just you know watch, watch Comedy Network, and that was on. So 
Did you ever local. try to do stand up? Did you ever want to do stand up? I have done it a few times. Um, I wanted to do it more just the time commitment. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I it's couldn't. also filled yeah. with terrible people. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> so. you, you seem far too well adjusted to <laughs> dip your toe in that horrific world. Oh, God. Uh, comedian Lou Faison performs in this episode. Yeah, I don't know uh, who that is. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of, con- of comics. I pref- do you know Latchlin Patterson? Yes. I've, I've done shows with him and he was relatively famous, I think, in Canada. Like he well, had his own comedy special or whatever. Yeah. He won. Then he come, he won or came close in like one of the, uh, in the last, last comic standing. standing. Yeah. That was the last one, but I did shows with him here in like 2009. Really? And, um, it was funny cause he was like, Oh, I had my own show on like the comedy network in Canada. And he's like, and now I come here and he's like, I'm a show with me. i didn't know because honestly i didn't know who he was so you tell me he had a show before he did last comic standing oh yeah he apparently in Hmm. the probably mid 2000s at least had like an hour special sure yeah a bunch of shows on yeah on the canadian comedy channel but then yeah comes to the states and is on last comic standing as an amateur yeah Um, so it's like that's about right um the main guy like so the biggest star that came from last comic standing for us is jerry d Okay. You, so Jerry D like came third in Last Comic Standing, and he was then just starting out, and now he's like huge in Canada. He's Is he got, Canadian? He, yeah, he's Canadian from okay. Toronto. Okay. He's he's um he he was a teacher. He actually was a te- taught my cousin. Oh wow! And, and then turned into a comedian. Oh, that, he's got a sitcom, right? Yeah, it's called yeah, it's called Mr. D, yeah. which I think is on Netflix in the United States. Yes. Um, yeah. or it was. And, but yeah, so that aired on CBC and that, that's, they just did their last season last year or earlier this year. Um, and now, you know, he's, he does tours and stuff, although not right now, but <laughs> last, last comic standing. One of the things I told them I would not do. <laughs> hey, I was like, I am not interested. No, it's a whole long story where they, like I had this terrible audition and then they, they called me a few years later and they were like, no, we're doing it different this year. There's not like a house they all live in and it's going to be the actual stand up." And, uh, um, and then I went and they, I had to audition like a bunch. And then I was like, I don't want to do this. And it was, it's a whole uh, awful thing. Oh uh, no. I don't audition. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't like, cause like when, when you were doing the stand up, you'd fill out a form and none of it was about your stand up. It was all like, uh reality show personality stuff of course they wanted to have you know conflicts and it was like this is not what i want to do right uh so you're watching that and then that's a half hour and then what are you doing at 8 30 so 8 30 right after that on comedy network is just for laughs which is another stand-up show but like the big the big one like this is the where a lot of famous uh, comedians from all over the world come and you know present it's in they usually film it in montreal just for last festival which I think is in July or yeah, exactly. August. Yeah. yeah. So this would have probably been from the month before. Cause we're looking at August here. Yeah. So, um, but they, yeah, they, but they'd rerun this all year. Like they would have just for laughs every day. This the episodes where they'd have like six or seven different comedians and their short sets. Um, wow. so I'd be watching that. Yeah. It was like, who were, yeah. Who were your ahead. favorites? Did you have like your, your top comics when you were growing up that you just loved? No. This is the weird thing. Is that no, I didn't. I don't I just watched everything and I didn't know anybody. I just watched I now I I think I have a, a little better uh, idea, but I I I still still not like succinct like I but I don't know. I'm I'm weird. I don't know. So it's like growing up someone was like uh who's your favorite uh, baseball team and you're like sports. Yeah, yeah, that would be the equivalent. Exactly. Yeah, I, just, yeah, I yeah. love it all. I just like I like those teams. That's it. I <laughs> like those great. teams. Yeah. So uh, I I don't know. I, I don't re- I I just have such a weird memory of 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 things when I was a kid. I don't I don't know why. Maybe it's because I was I'm starting to have a revelation now, so hold, give me a second. Um, I'm, maybe it was, I'm trying to think, maybe it was because I was so into like, no, I knew what I wanted to do and I was so focused on making videos and like, I was in a band, like just doing that stuff that I didn't dive into like knowing 
specifics of a lot of stuff. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out myself. No, right I now. mean that makes sense. Like it's almost the opposite of me, where like the the focus that is required to be technically proficient in anything like magic, mm -hmm. um, the practice involved mm -hmm. is uh, is incredibly time consuming. Right. And, and focus consuming. It's, yes. It's something you can't necessarily do while you're doing other stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, so exactly. I had, I had my zones and for several years at a time. So one, you know, there's a few years of magic, there's a few years of a band. Yep. All of that at the same time there was video, making videos. And then it turned to just videos. Right. Um, Which making, all requires a technical skill set practice sure yeah yeah and i just had and i was unlucky enough to do it all you know very young when I, and i knew one that I, I was very focused so i was i was ignoring a lot of other things maybe that other people were like were looking into more <laughs> where i was i was just watching and consuming but not thinking too hard about it <laughs> was there anything that you feel like you missed out on that you've either gone back and tried to watch or that you feel like you need to go back and and watch i i have i mean this is more recent, but you know, curb your enthusiasm and Seinfeld. I think I didn't. I didn't watch that Seinfeld at all until more recently. Um, How? What do you think of it? It's good. I, I again, I don't seek it out myself, but I I really appreciate what they were, did and to think about it, how good that show is and how the writing, how good it was for when it was out. It's it still holds up. But like it's 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 incredible. But and then yeah, and then Curb. I didn't know about it until much later, and I watched it all. And just I didn't know much again, as I said. <laughs> uh, that that interests me because like Seinfeld, I loved when it aired, mm. and I always say it's hard for me to watch now because mm. it's so of its time to me, and it's it's good. Mm -hmm. But like the plot, the the comedy comes from the plots and the revelations. Right. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. once you've seen it, it's not, I don't, just to me, yeah. no one ever, uh, yeah, no one right. ever agrees right. with me. <laughs> Be no, I agree with you because they're, again, what I've, from what I've seen, I, I, again, I've watched, I'm watching them now with a, yeah. with an educational, like I know right. what to look, Which I is know why it's stuff. fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like everything, it's all reveal based. Like everything is a new reveal. Right. And if you know the reveals, then yeah, it won't have the same effect. So I'm watching these not knowing. I'm like, wow, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so. as opposed to like uh, one thing I've noticed that's almost on every night in this issue is Mad About You. Something I get and never watched. It's a great show, Paul Reiser, um, and it's it's one of the shows that I always say is so underrated '90s because it holds up very much because it's literally just dialogue. It's character yeah. dialogue, and it's not reveal based, so it, it's very timeless. Like news radio. Uh, Mad About You and Spin City are like the three 90s American sitcoms that I feel like don't get enough credit for how great they were. Hmm. Uh, when people talk about like Seinfeld and Friends, I'm like, no, those other shows are weirdly more timeless in a lot of ways. That no makes sense, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, where were we? Nine o'clock on Wednesday? Uh, Drew Carey show. I watched a lot of that. I um, love that show. Yeah, it was good. It was very it was very interesting, some of the things they did on that show. It's a silly show. It is. Uh, and the gimmicks got crazy on that yeah. show. Yeah, didn't they like try to do something? Like they always did this thing where you'd have to find all the things wrong with this episode. They did it once a year. Yeah, they did like an April Fool's episode. Yeah, you'd yeah, write in and find all the things wrong. That with was it. funny. Uh, they're <laughs> one of the sick first sitcoms I can remember that did like an all musical episode. Mm -hmm. um, they did. They do like an episode where just like everyone was a puppet for no reason. You're right. Like yeah. it was just like weird. Yeah, very <laughs> weird. So because it could uh, Thursday night. What'd you do? There's that night. Um, okay. Oh wait, we missed. We missed the nine. Oh, we missed something. Nine thirty was June. Nine thirty. Uh, whose line is it anyway? I think yeah. it would. Would that carry? That was right after the Drew Carey show on the yep. same network. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I would. Yeah, definitely. That's a, another big influence uh, watching that again. Th they aired those the original uh, with the original host on the Comedy Network quite a bit. I guess they yep. with it was Drew Carey hosting that at this in ninety eight. In ninety eight, I think this was the first year he hosted the U S made one. This right. is when Wayne Brady was first on it. But right. previous to that, we got the Channel Four UK one with Clive Anderson. Right. Okay. Um, which Greg Proops, friend yeah. of mine. Was oh, on wow. both. Uh, yep, Greg's been on the show. He's good for Greg. When I recorded my last album, Greg opened for me as a favor. No way! <laughs> like Greg's just the best dude. I'm like, why on that's, earth would Greg prove something for me? It's that's great. so nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely awesome. watched. I grew up watching on the Comedy Network the original Who's Line. Yeah. So and that that we had nothing like that. 
Mm-hmm. That you know, I, that was just like mind blowing. That that yeah. show um, it still is. It, it, <laughs> it, still it still is amazing. Cool. Yeah, I saw when they came through Boston last year. Um, you know, Greg was like, "Oh, come to the show," and it was it was so funny. It was him and um, uh, uh, one of the one of the Murray brothers, Joel Murray. <laughs> Okay. And Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall. Was, oh, wow. You know, it was really funny. It was great. That's incredible. Um, all right. Thursday, what'd you do? All right. A lot of repeats here. I, I should just go quick. 8 p.m. would have been The Simpsons. 8.30 would have been Just for Laughs. So it's, an, again, another another uh, stand-up c- comedy show again. And then 9 p.m. would be Seinfeld. Um, again, I, I'm talking Seinfeld. Like I, I would wa- Now I would pick Seinfeld. Then I wouldn't. Right. But that right. was... But but there you go, and, and it's then, oh, and up then against it, news radio. <laughs> what, say that again. It's weirdly in this TV guide that Seinfeld is up against news radio. What's news radio? News radio is a show starring Dave Foley. Oh, uh, and it is about a network, a radio network, and it's a '90s sitcom. It's oh, really great. I've um, I've seen I've I've seen bits of it. I, I but I don't remember it very well. Very yeah. funny and weird. A lot of the guys from Mr. Show and Simpsons guys actually wrote on news radio later. Really. And, um, so it's a weird show. Sorry, I interrupted you. You're saying no. I was going to go on because this is where in the U.S. version at 9 p.m. there's breaking the magician's code. Yes, mass magician revealed. Also, yes. this, this is the reveal episode too. So yes, I, I, I in the when while this show aired, I was not watching it. I watched it much later. Like I've watched them all like on YouTube. Um, but I mean, it's. It's good and bad at the same time. Like, I, I think it's great for someone like me who loves magic and wants to know how things are done so I can use it in some way, either, right. you know, whatever. But, um, well, I would love to know what you think of it, what you thought about the show. I've heard conflicting things. So I, I enjoyed it at the time because I was sort of a magic nerd. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, in my adult life, when I befriended a bunch of magicians and I've asked them, uh, especially ones who are sort of contemporaries of the guy who turned out to be that magician mm. and all of them universally are like, that guy's a son of, like he was a hacky mm. Vegas jerk. Who, like he was like the open micer that stole everyone's material. Oh, okay. <laughs> so no one was really surprised that, um, cause when he first started doing that show, he pitched it as I'm only revealing how I do my tricks right. is the way he pitched it. But from what I understand, that wasn't the case, and he was revealing like other people's tricks, mm, oh, man. <laughs> um, and even some tricks that he did where the the prestige was the same. Uh-huh. He was showing how someone else did it, and not how he did it. Oh no! <laughs> so it was that kind of thing where people were like, "What the hell, man? That's my that's, that's so my funny. thing." The the problem with the show was that the, the angle of it was wrong. It was like, oh my god, look, we're gonna ruin everyone's career. Like it, yeah. that was what they were going for, and that I guess why people watched. The, yeah. But but what he says at the very end of the last episode makes it all okay. <laughs> he says, to me anyway, is he says basically I want to. I'm doing this so that I can expose everybody to how great magic is and how you can do it too. Um, that it you know, and hopefully kids will watch and want to be magicians because these aren't just we're not just fairies and stuff we're we're actually practically doing this and there's a way to right. do things and it's a way to keep you thinking and like i want uh, uh, then to inspire magicians to th- make better tricks now that everyone knows essentially so that is like that's great if you led with that <laughs> right i think well, it would I, come it would come across better but they couldn't do they couldn't do that no because well, because I, the ratings would not be there <laughs> Well, I also wonder if that was an after the fact justification too, because number one, and I'm not saying this isn't true, but I've Mm -hmm. never met anyone who's like, I was inspired to become a magician due to breaking the magician's code. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Yeah. Cause it, cause the whole, Mm -hmm. the, I think the thing that draws people to magic and in my experience is they want to be the smartest guy in the room or like kind of that one, it's almost like a detective. Like you're, you know, Mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes, like I, 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 I'm, I'm in control of this situation and I'm kind of one upping everybody. And that's, so that's one way to look at it. I don't think, I don't know yeah. if I, I look at it that way, but I, I, I can see that. Yeah. Some people are, <laughs> uh, you know, not everybody. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. when you're presenting it as here's how you do it. Yeah. You're removing that aspect of it seeming cool. 
That's where you're true. not like, wow, that That's magician's true. cool. You're like, that guy's just doing a thing. And it was sort of presented in a way like, these magicians think they're pretty cool, huh? You know, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th- this is all they're doing. Yeah. That's the, that, and, uh, that's what the problem. I, I, and maybe whatever, whatever, if that's true or not, what he says at the end, if he really believed that, if that's really why he wanted to do it or not. I'm sure there's a bit of like he was mad or, you know, angered yeah. because people didn't respect him as a good magician and he was going to screw nice one sentiment. over. It's a nice sentiment. That's a nice right. sentiment. But I, I like that made it for me like, okay, I can I can be okay with it. But the way the whole thing was presented was, okay, this is not nice. <laughs> I look at, um, does Fool, Penn Teller Fool us? In? I was going to come to the, yeah, that's that's a great show. Like that, That's the modern day version of that, but they're doing it the way he did in the last three minutes of, of the whole yes. series. <laughs> yes. It's, <laughs> Where it's perfect. Like it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect show. <laughs> and I love my favorite thing about that too, because I know some magic stuff and uh, terminology things, but mm-hmm. not a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite thing is the way they tell the, yes. the magician they know. Yeah. And they do it out in the open, but people wouldn't know. Like, they'll be like, exactly. uh, do the words Ostenheim maneuver mean anything? Right, right. And then they they'd say, be like, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love I love that. And then, yeah, and he even said it once. I remember watching, he said, Penn uh, said that, oh, I'll, um, I'm saying things so that you know, maybe not the, the layman doesn't know, but like kids can go Google it later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. Which um, is great. Did you see the episode with Richard? What's his name? The blind uh, card guy. I think I did, but I, I you'd have to remind me, but I think uh, I, I've seen a, pretty I, much all of it. It's, I, I can't remember his last name. There's a documentary about him. Um, and he's, oh, he's he completely, totally blind mm-hmm. and is just like an amazing card magician. Yeah. I remember, I remember watching this episode, but I don't remember what he did. The documentary is great. It's called Delt. I think is the documentary. Delt. Okay. Um, he's a martial artist. He does cards, but it, the thing that I loved about that one is, uh, when he came out, he goes, I'm not going to do magic. Oh. I'm doing, I'm telling you exactly what I'm going to do. And that's exactly what he did, which appears like magic. But Teller was like, oh, he just is amazingly skilled. Wow. <laughs> like he literally said, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And then he did it. <laughs> and, and that was it. <laughs> he just I'm going to have so to watch, watch this as soon as we're done. Yeah, Cause I gotta, I gotta remind myself. Yes. That's, I, that's I, awesome. I'm curious to hear what you think. And the documentary is amazing. Like he just, practices with cards nonstop every day all day but he's completely blind that's <laughs> like, wow um i don't know how you would even do anything like that that's uh, crazy like as someone who knows how card tricks work could you imagine doing them completely blind i mean there's some stuff I, by feel but uh that's i mean i can probably do a few without looking but i mean if i was in especially now like i'm not in practice and right, right, right but i yeah. could probably do i mean half that's half the thing is you you don't want to be looking at your hands because right, everyone's right, right. looking. So, right. yeah, that's part of it. But I, I mean, that's still amazing. <laughs> yeah, to know that you've done it correctly, <laughs> and like he's being at, being at that level too. Like, wow. Oh yeah, just insane shuffling. And it's I uh, I saw Ricky J live once, and it was mm-hmm. one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Really, like, it's just uh, he's the closest I've ever seen to somebody who's actually magic. <laughs> <laughs> He had an amazing special, and it might be my favorite magic special of all time. It's called Ricky J's 52 Assistants. Okay. And it's this card trick uh, special that he did. It was a stage show. And he just does unbelievable stuff. Um, really? Just, uh, and there's a really great documentary about Ricky J as well, if you haven't seen it. Oh, um, no. he's <laughs> He was forever trying to do this trick where he could produce a block of ice mm. out of nowhere. Really, And he'd apparently been studying and trying to figure out how he could do this forever. And someone in the documentary tells a story that uh, she met up with him for lunch one day in L.A. Uh, They were sitting outside at a restaurant. She got there first. He showed up. Uh, They have a whole lunch. And then at the end of the lunch, he picks up the napkin and drops it. And there's a block of ice. (laughs) Like a lunchbox size block of ice. Oh, my God. She's like, what the hell? Where? How would you? And just like that is that's the it. best. Yeah, oh my that's god, the best. Um, so yeah, I, his fifty-two assistants might be my favorite card magic uh, okay. show I've ever seen. I, I'm gonna have to uh, watch that too. Yes, you give me some homework. It. I like yes. this. No, I haven't seen it. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you think once you do get to watch it. Uh, right. Let's see. Friday night, final night of the week. Okay. What Actually, you, you know what? I, I wanted to say I, I have a, yes. an extra mention. Yes. I don't know what this uh, what this was, but at 10 p.m. 
there is something called, um, and I think it's on the, the local uh, regional channel. It's called the Beaches Jazz Festival. Beaches Jazz yes. Festival is a very big, it's just a, it's a street festival in Toronto on Queen Street East um, that I used to go to all the time. Like my grandfather had like a little convenience store there for 50 years, like in, right on that street that the jazz festival was on. So I, I guess they're just covering it in, <laughs> on, on the cable show. Yeah. Uh, I, I suppose, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to mention it because it's so part of my, the, the beaches are part of my life. Um, so uh, that'd be a yeah. cool thing to go back and watch. I wonder if someone's uploaded that to YouTube or something and you can see like the yeah. exact time you would be hanging yeah. out it's there. Ju- it's know. just, yeah. And it's just, it's just a street, uh, it's just a, a music street show. Like you just have bands all over the street, right? Yeah. You know, like any, yeah. but I don't know what, I guess they were just had a camera there. I, it's very odd, but I, uh, yeah, that is weird. Now I, now I need to go watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious I don't know if anyone's like. going to be able to find that. That's, that's a very small station in a very localized area. <laughs> um, I was a, a tape trader for years and I am even surprised by the stuff people have uploaded on YouTube, like in the really? last year, oh, like wow. obscure regional shows, TV broadcasts that, um, I thought were lost forever. Like huh. it's, it's insane what people have uploaded that, stuff. I'd never thought unsold pilots. I'd only ever heard of like really just weird. Yeah. And that's all recently too. I don't know why, why, but, mm-hmm. uh, so Friday, uh, Friday night, would you do? Yeah. Friday, 8 PM. Um, I didn't have a great choice here that I think I like, So I went with Sabrina, the teenage witch, even though I, I only watched here and there that show. I, but, um, I'm going to go with that. Also, I noted that in the U.S. version, they only call it Sabrina, where yes. in the Canadian one, they say Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Do you know why? Because I, I, I don't. No. I'm okay. wondering if there was like another show named Sabrina in Canada. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> they were like, had to specify. which Sabrina is this? Right. <laughs> is this the witch one? Um, I actually <laughs> really like that show. Like, I was definitely too old for it. Hmm. Um, but it was a really... My friend Nell created that show, Nell Scavell, oh, wow. um, who wrote for The Simpsons, and she wrote for for everything no um, she's from here in boston but like pen gillette is on that show right joel hodgson shows up dana gould shows up like there's a lot of pretty hip uh alt comics and magicians that show up on this That's basically so a kid's show which yeah, is bizarre, it is um, bizarre. And caroline ray who's a great stand-up right um so it's it's weird um have you watched the new sabrina at all on netflix no not at all it's pretty good. Um, yeah. I think if I was a gothy 16 year old girl, I'd like it more, <laughs> um, which I'm not, Oh, uh, regardless of what people I'm say. I'm glad you cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a, sh- that's a show that if it's on now and I'm flipping, I'll just sit and watch it. Okay. And be like, ah, this is fun. Yeah. Um, and then eight 30, what'd you do? Eight 30 candid camera. So this, as to what we were talking about at, uh, on and off in this episode, this was the original hidden camera show from right. the 50s. Exactly, yeah. Uh, they brought this back. It, the The hidden camera show would come back essentially every time there was a writer's strike. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> so geez, that's funny. you could kind of tell the cycle. So in 87, we had a new candid camera, and there was a show called Totally Hidden Video, and that's when you started to get America's Funny Stuff. Like, these hidden camera shows really? <laughs> all seemed to come back tied to writer strikes. And huh. in the late 90s, I believe this was tied to that as well. Um, and it didn't, even though it was the original, it didn't work because it was almost too nice <laughs> oh yeah for the times because <laughs> mtv had a show at this time called buzzkill okay. that was like a really mean hidden camera show it was almost like jackass oh wow. um, okay yeah, um, yeah, yeah you know and you have the tom green show and you started to get these much more cringy stuff okay um, yeah yeah Canon camera was just too sweet <laughs> <laughs> it is it's very very nice i i it always bothered me that they wouldn't those shows that wouldn't show a reveal mm-hmm. like uh totally hidden video was a fox show here in the late 80s and i remember they did one where they attached uh, a fake mouth to a dog oh uh like a mechanical mouth and they okay. had him in like a window at a pet store <laughs> and in a mall and so a kid would be looking at the dog and their parent would go in the dog would start talking to the kid oh wow okay and then the kid would be like, the dog's talking, whatever. And then he never showed them telling this kid that it's oh, not real. And I'm like, sad. I don't know if they told them or not. Yeah, you're right. I hate that. So they have, um, they, they have the just for laughs gags here. So it's like, it's like they usually film it, I think, in Montreal or in somewhere in Quebec. Um, and it's, it's just a gag show where it's basically a hidden camera. And they've been doing this show for years. Um, and there's no dialogue. 
it's all just music and like you're just watching each scene happen and it's like pantomimed and to, to show you what's going to happen then you see the people react to it and I hate hate it when they don't show like the reveal usually they do but like why don't I need to see the yeah I need to people. know you you let them go yes <laughs> they exactly turn this off exactly. because there's probably some kid out there who's like man I, I swear that dog talked and I'm never going to get over like they're exactly. in therapy because yeah, of that, yeah. which is bad uh, that's weird that's 8.30 and then 9 o'clock what'd you do? 9pm I and mean, this is a more recent um uh, pick, uh, CFL football, Canadian Football League, is, is that, Winnipeg, Winnipeg at Edmonton. <laughs> is that still a thing? There's still a CFL, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I worked for the CFL for three years before I actually got the job for in Buffalo with the Buffalo Sabres. So this is why this is, this really started my career. Right out of school, I, I was the video producer at the Canadian Football League, the actual league office in Toronto. And I started like their first documentary st- stuff there. Um, and, and that led again to doing documentaries now for where I am now. So, right. Yeah. So that's why it's a re, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't have watched it back then, but I'm, I see val has been a big part of my life. That's where I met my wife. Right. Um, so I'll go with that. <laughs> Would it be interesting to go back and see what it looked and sounded like? Then? What, the CFL? Yeah. I've seen it all. I've I had okay. to go through all the old footage when I was working there and like make okay, it. So right. I've seen everything. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like, I never need to see it again, but no, I watched no, it. No, 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 exactly. Um, I would have gone with Millennium. Okay, and which what is was that? Millennium was a, sp- a spin off, sort of, of the X Files. Oh, okay. And it starred Lance Hendrickson, and it was about a guy who was like a serial killer profiler, but had psychic powers and would kind of get into their heads sometimes. Cool. And he worked for this mysterious group called the Millennium Group that were actually this like. Uh, Illuminati cult that was trying to bring about the apocalypse in the year 2000. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And the show was two seasons and it ended on a cliffhanger and it never, it, like, it never got resolved. <laughs> oh, God. They never revealed the trick to us. Oh, <laughs> Still no. bothers me to this day. But it's a cool show. Um, and, and it was a weird show and, and dark and some, and like had a strange sense of humor. Um, and it, it, again, it was only two seasons, so it doesn't have as much of a cult audience as like the X Files does. But it was, it was kind of a cool, strange show. Chris Carter as well. So you're not watching anything now. Uh, what do you mean? Like, oh, now, like currently? Yeah. yeah. In well, my no, life? while while I'm talking to you, it looked like you were watching stuff. And oh no, 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 no I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, but is there a show that like you can't get enough of now, or like a comfort show that you watch, or anything you're watching in quarantine to like chill uh, out? We we fin- we finished a few things. Um, we we just started Mind Hunter, which okay. um, it seems that my wife isn't into. But I am loving. <laughs> Anna so. Torv is in that from Fringe. She's okay. great. Yeah, I so I don't know. Did you, have you seen you've seen it? Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of it, but it got a little. It was a little grim for me. Okay, so <laughs> I was yeah, in the uh, wrong headspace for it. <laughs> I see. Okay, all I know is that it was because I met the editors of that show at, when I went to NAB there in uh, Vegas. So I, I'm interested. They use the same program, Premiere, which is a, the editing program. So I'm like, ah, oh, well, this is fun. You have trouble losing yourself and stuff if you're watching it and like picking apart the technical yes, things. Yes, yes, sometimes, yes. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did we? Fi- uh, what did we just finish? We finished something really good. Oh man, I don't know. We well, we we finished Ozark a while ago when that first when that came out. Yeah. That was it. Came out during quarantine and it yeah and we, right okay i, I don't know yeah. time is uh, nothing anymore <laughs> no i it could be 20 years i don't know so, yeah, yeah I, I find i'm going back into like like my wife just watches gardener's world all the time i'm watching <laughs> a lot of stuff like somebody feed phil like i'm watching yes. like, very non-narrative just like right. kind of like yeah like, oh you know what we watched uh upload on amazon have you watched oh that? how was that no i've seen the trailers for it my friend it Matt was, is in it Really? Oh, it was very interesting. I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. I, I like they played with time a little bit and I just love anything that plays with time and I love Back Back to the Future is my favorite movie. So like that oh. all that stuff is what I like. So and they do a very good job also of setting up a, the futuristic world. They, the rules of what they've come up with I think I really enjoyed and like the new stuff of how they've decided to use things. So I liked it. I liked it. Um, uh, last summer yeah. Christopher Lloyd told me I wasn't funny in front of five thousand people. What? 
<laughs> this is a real thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? So I do, a, since I started doing the show, they hire me to do, to run Q and A's and things at a lot of conventions and stuff. Okay. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was doing a back to the future panel with, um, uh, Tom Wilson and Christopher Lloyd. Oh, and, um, I think I've and, seen this panel. I've, I've seen bits of it. You may is have. It possible? Yeah. Okay. I was in Denver and it was this 5,000 seat arena. Um, and Tom is a stand up, and I don't think he wanted a moderator which is fine, but it's not my fault. Like, I don't like just tell yeah. me I don't want one. Um, and so at one point a kid in the crowd was asking a question and the mic wasn't working. So I went into the crowd with my mic so he could ask the question. Yeah. And Tom as a, as a joke, uh, took my chair and he was like, Oh, thank God Ken's gone. And he like took my chair and brought it to like the back part of the stage, like facing oh, no. the, the, the curtain. Um, so, as a fellow stand up, when I went on stage, I just sat in it where it was and then conducted the interview like that. Oh, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe not the yeah. best choice, but I'm like, all right. So eventually, Tom was like, get back over here. So I go down and I sit down, and Christopher Lloyd just goes, You're not funny. Oh, <laughs> like, no. I'm really angry. Like, in, really, in all seriousness, he was yeah, really mad. Yeah, <gasps> he was really mad. And uh, because Duck. I'm me, I felt awful. <laughs> like, I just felt so awful. Oh, uh, no. And then he was also like, uh, I don't know if you watch Fringe at all. Fringe was one no, of my favorite didn't. shows. Oh, but really? um, okay. if you like time travel, I got to watch it. It's oh, amazing. Okay. But uh, Christopher Lloyd guest stars in an episode and he basically plays Doc Brown now. Oh, okay. And so someone in the audience said, like, what would your characters be doing, you know, now? And Christopher Lloyd went, uh, well, I'd probably be trying to fix everything I broke, you know, with the time travel. <laughs> Which I said, which is a good answer. Yeah. And I said, oh, that's basically like the character that you played in Fringe. And he goes, uh, Fringe? And I'm like, yeah, it was a show that yeah, oh, you're no. on Fringe. And he goes, no. Oh, <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Yeah, you're on the show Fringe. He's like, no, I never did a thing <laughs> called Fringe. Oh, no. It was just, yeah, it was, uh. Oh, that's but, so you know, funny. <laughs> and it's uh, it's yeah. online for everyone to see. <laughs> uh, well, that's I, I know you, there's a list of things now you've told me to watch. Yeah. That's the first I'll watch. Yeah, I'll watch well, that you'll, first. You'll enjoy that. You'll enjoy that. Um, oh, but, my yeah, God, so that's I great. That. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate you taking the time. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, thank uh, you for having me. Hope you enjoyed looking through uh, Canadian and American TV. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is great. Uh, you know, actually, I wanted to mention that at 9 p.m. in the U.S. one on a Friday. Sorry, one more thing. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. They have the World's Greatest Magicians 3, which is, a, yes. I think, a special show. So I didn't know this was a show until three weeks ago. Yep. I heard about this because I was looking to do some Zoom magic for, like, work. And I was looking into like, what do I do? And then I talked to my magician friend, Dergy, Dergy Spade, and who I've done the shows with. And he's like, Oh, you should watch something because, um, Max Maven does, a, does something mm -hmm. like, like interactive. And that's what a lot of what he does on the world's greatest magician. So I, I went back and he, and I watched a bunch of stuff. So yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So it's I would the have thing been watching that. You were that. watching anyway. Yeah. And it, yeah. It, Every world's greatest magic thing, for some reason, had the pen dragons on. I remember. Okay, I, <laughs> they all did metamorphosis, like every yeah. single time. It was like that's the pen so dragons. strange. Fair enough, but hey, that's where we're at. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank and you. It's been great talking to you. I hope you guys are staying safe up there in uh, the Great White North. And uh, thank you. Who knows when we'll be able to leave the house again? But I don't know. I'm to... doing fine. I'm doing yeah, fine here. Yeah, same. <laughs> we're we're built for this. We're, this, this is, is it. Our, this we're built for. I love it. <laughs> There you go. That's Joseph, the man who taught me that Pizza Pizza is a whole different chain of restaurants in Canada. And I think they have a thing called like Boston Pizza in Canada, which isn't Boston Pizza. I, hey, I don't understand it, man. I've been eating a lot of pizza here uh, in Boston. So I understand that, but I don't understand the rest of the world. Who knows if I'll ever make it to Canada? Who knows if I'll ever leave the house again? We just don't know. Nobody knows. But I want to thank you guys for continuing to listen, obviously, uh, for still giving to the Patreon. I cannot thank you enough for that. I know that times are tough, and, and uh, even for me, it's a little bit tough. So you, it actually is helping very much. Uh, but again, if, if you can't do it, please do not. I, I, uh, I am not important. Uh, so I, I'm glad that you guys are staying safe. Thank you guys for reaching out to me and interacting with me on social media. I love hearing from you guys, hearing how you're doing, hearing what you're watching and, uh, hearing your guest suggestions. So, uh, now that things have opened up a little bit, uh, the, the world has opened up for me guest wise, not for people leaving the house. Cause 
we're in this for the long haul. Um, but I can get people who don't have to come to my house and I don't have to go to them. So it's, uh, it's opened up the realm of possibilities a little bit. So, uh, everyone who's made suggestions, thank you so much. I have reached out to every single person you've suggested. Some I've heard back from, some I haven't, but I won't get into that. Uh, but I am doing my damnedest to get those people to do the show and I will do my damnedest to get any future suggestions of people you get, uh, to me in any way possible. And some ways you can get that information to me is through my email, which is tvguidancecounselor@gmail.com, or kennetikenread.com, or you can go on social media. I am at Kenneth W. Reed, R-E-I-D, or at TV Guidance on all the things. Uh, tried TikTok. My God, I'm old. I turned 40 uh, in, in lockdown. Whew, that was, yeah. I, I ordered a turkey dinner from a local restaurant and had it delivered. That was pretty exciting. And I finally got the new polar seltzer flavors uh, as I sip a perfectly plum summer right now. And it may be my, mm, it's in my top five best polar flavors of all time. I think it's up there with the sour cherry limeade. Uh, it's, it's real good. Anyway, I'm not going to go on about Polar. I should just start my own podcast about Polar Seltzer. Hey, Polar Seltzer. Uh, they didn't ever sponsor the show, but they do send me Polars uh, to stock the studio, which is irrelevant now because it's just me in here. And I have a giant teddy bear sitting in the seat that the guest sits in uh, while I while I record and I talk to it uh, as I'm recording episodes with the person as if they are that person. I probably overshared there. Well, if you want more oversharing, please come here next week. I'll be here. I'll be oversharing and we'll have a brand new edition of TV Guidance Counselor. Everyone needs something to do.